Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to wherever you're logging in from. From the Philippines, India, Pakistan, UK, South Africa, or anywhere in the Middle East as well, whether it's UAE, Kuwait, Qatar, Saudi, anywhere. A very, very good morning or good afternoon to you. A warm welcome to you from Nexa Dose, your daily dose of wisdom. Those of you who know Nexa Dose know what we do, know the platform well, and those who know me, know me as well very well. My name is Omar Sharif, and I am a student of life. Today, we have a very, very special guest with us who shares very similar values as mine. I have always been a person who loves to share, learn, and contribute to people's lives. I love to enrich people's lives. I actually have a passion for impacting lives, and I love to share space. I love to share my time with people who are very much like-minded. And today, we have a person with us, Irfan Nurani, who is a clarity coach himself, who has always been a pioneer in terms of impacting lives. He is someone who has walked the talk as far as change is concerned, as far as transition is concerned, as far as reinventing is concerned. We'll hear about that as we move forward in the, in the conversation. Let me go ahead and welcome Irfan officially on board. Irfan, absolute welcome to you. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to whichever part of the world you guys are listening. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Omar Sharif, and, and it's been a privilege and an honor to be on your platform today and, and guide, lead, and, and support, you know, and give some insights and have a fantastic conversation with you. It's been a while. Thank you so much. It sure has been, and thank you for thank you for being gracious enough to accept the invite. Uh, I'm sure there'll be a lot of value addition today uh, from this conversation to the people in the group. This group, Next at Those, the Daily Days of Wisdom, was really created by three people, Conan Shahidi, Dones Arbaz, and me, with the whole intention of really adding value to people's lives. And to that effect, we try to do Facebook Lives, we invite people, we do panel discussions, and we love the way people get impacted. And people respond back to us, give us feedbacks on how it has changed them for the better. And that, I think, is really what you want in life. You know, That really gives you a sense of fulfillment, which really makes you happy from the inside that you've contributed to someone. And that keeps us going, frankly. Yeah, you know, there has to be that way, Omar Sharif, because I know all three of you guys, right? And when great minds come together and pour their 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 wisdom out, it has to has to create value. There is no question about it. So you know, well done, because I've I've been seeing a, a lot some of your lives as well that you did previously. You know, I saw the recordings on the page. It's some fantastic work and content that you've been putting out for a lot of people, and I'm really really thankful. Uh, because you know, obviously, we we sit in the same boat with the same vision of impacting <laughs> lives. So that's that's really, really an honor as well to come here and contribute. Thank you so much. Uh, coming from you, that means a lot, and we plan to and we intend really to keep carrying that torch forward as much as we can. Um, it's never easy. All of us are busy in our corporate lives as well, but we try to do whatever we can uh, whenever we get. Uh, it's a passion, so we keep pursuing it. Yeah. So anyway, so yeah. this. This this uh, conversation today is also a part of that where we want to add value to the audience as well using your experience, your expertise. I've been following you. I've seen your miraculous, incredible work you've done with people. I've seen some of the feedbacks coming from people, some of your coaches and mentees who have thanked you for what you've done to them, the kind of clarity you provided to them. And you know, the best part that I like about you is you have really walked the talk. Right. And, and and that's something that's something which really appeals to me a lot. You're not just an armchair philosopher talking about clarity. You actually have yeah. been through it. You faced the challenges, yeah. you faced the transitions and you're there to talk about experience. That makes it yeah. absolutely worthwhile. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, uh, Dr. Omar, let me let me get into a little bit of uh, uh, my story of where I come from, because it will be important and relevant to the to the, the fact that you're talking about transition and change. And and maybe I can throw some light from my experience and from my perspective. You know, again, I know. Thank you for 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 labeling me as an expert of transition and change. But you know, I I have a philosophy that I've learned from my mentor as well. That you know what, actually, when you when you when foot on the ground, like you know, the soldier, when you actually start doing things, you will learn much more than you learn in a book, right? So I I totally believe that, and and kind of I have I've been an example of that if, when I look look back into my life, and that's why the story is very important in this context. 
So Dr. Omar, you know, I come from a space of nothing. That's what I would say, because, you know, it's, I really want to have this put out very honestly, right? Uh, lost my father when I was two. Absolutely no idea. Lost kid, confused kid. Okay. No role model to be, to be guided. My, I, I had, I lived in a joint family. I had my uncle, but I, I, you know, not a good role model as such to follow and be, be led by in, in life. Right. And, uh, my mom, you know, she's my super coach. She's a super contributor. She's my inspiration to do this work. Actually, uh, she still contributed, you know, not, not only to us five kids single handedly, right. Without, I mean, she's, she's, she's not even literate. Right. Uh, she comes from a small village in Gujarat in India. And then she, 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 she hold the fort, she hold it strong. And she led us all uh, into life and, and, and guided us well, right? Uh, but I learned a lot because of those situations. Like, you know, like if, I'm sure you would have known this quote of Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs says that you can only connect the dots looking back. And I can see that now. When I was, when I was a young kid, I, I had no idea what I'm going to do, how I'm going to figure out life. Uh, you know, our struggle as a family was to make sure that every single month we have our bills paid, we have food on the table. And that's what we were struggling. That That's the basic vision that I had of life at, a, at an early age, right? And I used to question at times, you know, Dr. Omar, why me? Why this has happened to me? Like, you know, I'm sure a lot of people listening out there would relate, you know, when, when we have tough situations, when you have challenges, we start questioning, the hell is this happening to me? Uh, you know, for, for some people, maybe, uh, maybe, it's a, uh, maybe it's one thing that is bothering them too much. And for some, someone else who has a drastic situation, it's bothering them at, at a level uh, unimaginable. But any any situation, any tough situation, we, we go there. So one day, remember, you know, uh, uh, earlier on, I, I, I realized in my teens that what my what my mom has been going through, I had I had, I had like, like a light bulb moment, right? Because a young kid, you know, TK Hora, you know, it's going on, we'll figure out the food and everything. But I, I, I had this light bulb moment saying, you know what, my mom has been struggling for so long. I need to pull my socks. I'm doing, I was working, there's no question about it. I was working like a dog, like 12, 14 hours a day in a small job. I've done a wide variety of jobs. I've done like, a, I've been a courier guy. I've been, a, I've been a BPL mobile verification guy. So many things. I've worked in a small, like a, a 30 square feet purse selling uh, shop. I used to stand outside the shop and one person. Anyways, I don't want to go into too details, but I've, I've struggled my, I've done my part. But one day I said, you know what? How long will this go on? And I decided consciously, I'm not, I said, I'm, it's not going to be like this. And I need to change. I need to figure things out, mainly for my mom. Now, this part of the story, what I'm, uh, how it is relevant to this conversation is, uh, there are two important aspects that happen all the day. One, the most important one is uh, what I realized that people who decided, doesn't matter what, what is going on in their life. They have the resource. They don't have the resource. They have clarity. They don't have clarity. Uh, uh, you know, uh, they have the time. They don't have the time. But the decision that day actually allowed me to go on this journey of figuring things out. So the, the point I'm making is yeah, from this part of my story, I realized the importance of decision. Like a, like a very conscious effort and, and, and saying that's how it's going to be, no matter what, no matter how long it takes. But this is what I'm working towards. And the second thing, the most important thing, the reason I didn't do it for myself. I was lazy. Let me be honest. I know I was, I said I was working for 12 hours, but I still feel like I used to have days like, you know, I'm not doing much changing jobs every now and again, because I'm, you know, I'm doing my college as well, supporting, you know, for someone else's standard, it may still be like very high. Oh, you're still working. But for, for, for my standard, at the time, when I look at it now, I was like still whittling away time. I mean, like, wandering away time. So the point I'm making is uh, the second was the reason my mom, that I want to make her life better. I want to make sure that she doesn't have to work the way she has been working. She used to work, uh, uh, you know, you know, the newborn babies, you know, you have this monsieur for the new baby, uh, you know, uh, they go out and they, they massage the baby and they make him healthy in India. I'm sure you, you are aware. So she used to do that to make ends meet along with me working, my younger brother working as well. And at that day, I said, decided, and I, I, I embarked on a path. I said, you know what? I need to change this element. And that's, that's the two points that I want to mention from this part of my story. I don't know if you have any, anything you, know, you want to ask or something or. That's so profound and impressive, Irfan. Thank you for sharing that background. You know, that just elevates your position in my eyes much more than what it was. Thank you for sharing that. You know, I always believe people coming from humble backgrounds are really the ones who can create a mark, you know, because you've seen it all. 
You've seen how people's yeah. lives can get impacted. You've seen what people don't have. And then when you start adding value to other people's lives, trying to give them what they really deserve in life, you know it from the grassroots level. So thank you for the for that uh, insight, for that background. I definitely wasn't aware of that. And it takes a lot of courage to share that on screen. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Diving you know, it's, in- It's really important. Before, before I, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, it's okay. I, I'm saying it's really important, you know, because I realized that, you know, uh, like like they say, right, truth sets you free. <laughs> and when people know where you're coming from, they understand uh, the reason why I'm saying what I'm saying. Like you said, you know, I just don't want to be a philosopher, but uh, I, I want to I want to give the real truth and so that if people people understand certain elements and may, maybe they, they also do something for their life going forward. And, and that will be that will be great for them. Absolutely. And that becomes an inspiration. When people say, when your fun can do it, why, why, why can't I? And, you know, that just adds to the sure. layers of inspiration. Fantastic. Sure. Great. Uh, before I move on, uh, can I just res- can I uh, you know, request the audience, the members who have logged in, who are watching us live to ensure that you give access to StreamYard. StreamYard is the interface we're using right now. I can see your comments coming on the right hand side, but I see most of them are saying Facebook user. It doesn't have a name. So if you allow access to StreamYard, I'll be able to see your name and also highlight your name on the screen so that you can converse with us, okay? Just a request to all the audience members. Erfan, coming back to you, you know, I have been following you and I noticed that you have a commitment to transform 3 million lives by 2023. When I read that, I said, wow, that's such a big outcome, 3 million lives. How can you do that? That's really thinking big in capital letters. And then I thought to myself, you know, it's never the goal, which is really easy or difficult. It's always the person who can really create an impact and make a difference. And then when it, when the person who actually commits that kind of a goal is an author of a book called Dreams to Reality, then I know that this is something which can definitely can be converted to reality based on the experience you have and based on the commitment that you have in life. So would love to know more about that. What was the driving force? behind the 3 million people impact that you actually came up with? Okay, so uh, great question, obviously. Uh, it's, see, when, when, I started, when I started exploring, uh, you know, uh, let me, let me, let me uh, pick up from where I, where I stopped last time. So again, long story short, in between, a lot of things happened. Uh, I, I moved forward, uh, you know, I found a, a, an amazing job where, which allowed me to travel the world. So I traveled the world, uh, you know, in uh, hospitality and travel industry, been to 50 countries, uh, explored a lot of uh, human aspects and human, uh, you know, behavior while well, working with 45 different nationals, understood a lot about human beings. Uh, and I wanted to do that because I wanted to understand why certain things are done in a certain way by certain human beings. And I, I gain a lot of information, right? A lot of, lot of exposure, I would say, like on ground, as I said. And, uh, I, I, and again, once, once there is a light bulb moment again in my life, uh, which I don't want to go into detail. It's, it's, it's also an, in itself a story. Uh, and I said, you know, I have much more that I can do with my life than just doing a job, traveling the world. Yes, I love traveling the world. I still love traveling the world. But my priorities had changed. Like, I'm sure you would have realized that, you know, a lot of people working in corporate jobs and jobs and, you know, they, they want to do something different beyond the point, right? But there is a routine being set up. There has been monotony. Uh, a comfort level has been, right? Uh, I, I I was in the same position, right? 11 years, doing well. But there were certain things which I felt not right in my life. First thing, obviously, mm-hmm. was I was constantly being away from my family. I know people go away for like 10 years, 20 years, and the, the entire life, they, they change countries, they change the culture, everything has changed, right? But I, I said, you know, I, I want to I wanna connect more with what I am, I want to I want to serve more my mom because she's aging right now, right? I mean, uh, she's my superhero, right? And I can't uh, just turn my back. This is what I felt at the moment. I said, you know, I want to come back to India. I want to be able to serve her more, right? I want to be able to connect more with my family because now I'm married, right? I mean, I'm not that teenage guy and, you know, doing different jobs. I've, I've, I've become successful to a certain degree. I'm providing well. I have the houses. I've helped extended family members and stuff, which pretty much all of us uh, do, right? Everyone is a good human being, I believe. Now, I said, I want to do more because I think I, I had started feeling, I was having this feeling, I don't know if you have felt or if anyone listening out there has felt that, you know, what? I have much more, you know, I, I can, I, like if I'm at a job, my manager says something, but I know, you know what, 
he's saying this but i know i can do better or or mm-hmm. he's doing this but i know i can do much better so i had started developing this feeling and i was i, I didn't wanted to let this feeling go away because i i've realized that you know what if you feel a certain way if you if you have this thought if you have that idea it's there for a reason it's not just given to you i mean it it, it came to you right so i said i want to harness this i want to harness this i want to i want to take it beyond just the feeling i want to put it into action what do i do how do i do so i had a lot of questions and i'm i'm, I'm kind of a thinker right i used to constantly think and what can we do what can what can i do how how do i do it i mean i've got an amazing exposure and that's where it started that you know what i need when i go back this time in india i used to go away for 6 months for on my assignments and this is how i worked like two months two months in india six months for assignment then come back uh, i was a, i was an officer sailing on cruise ships uh, you know for people just to give context and uh, then i said uh, you know I, i really want to do this uh, work where i can impact life so i said let me start a business but the business idea didn't work out because i think it was again a, a, of a massive scale because i i like to think uh, big things uh, but it didn't, didn't work out because i didn't have the resource i didn't knew many people i was traveling constantly so i didn't have good connections so i said what is it that i can do which will allow me not only to do one idea maybe 10 different ideas right and and the answer came to me uh, you know i i love this quote of jim carrey uh, jim carrey says people never forget how you make them feel and i was inspired by that and and i said you know what i want to be a person of value where every interaction that i do every conversation that every conversation i mean every right from that uh, thought i want to impact i want to make them feel a certain way right meaning i want to make them either inspired either whatever it is whatever it takes for them to take action i want to leave them with that with every conversation and i started focusing on that i made a conscious decision again and i said this is how i'm going to be so that i became the flame and not the moth <laughs> if you know what i mean nice you understand yeah. so people people can come to me rather than me going behind people and for that to happen i had to find an environment i had to find work space or i have to find an idea where people realize that i am a person of value and what best can it be than than being a speaker on the stage so uh, you know and again the rest is history because one day i i, I ended up in in my mentors uh, event and i said you know what this is what i'm going to do for the rest of my life no matter what because this will give me this will this is sink in with my identity that i'm trying to create and that's where I, that's where my journey began uh, of being the clarity guy or the clarity man again the clarity man also didn't came overnight uh, I, i i used to i used to impact life i used to have conversation i used to guide them and every single time like i said you know the steve job connecting the dots backwards and i started thinking about what has happened with all these people and what are they saying about me and that's how clarity man evolved so i don't know i gave you a lot but i i i missed the question I, did i answer your question or can you repeat the question please? um no i was i think you did answer the question in various ways um and so the driving force behind it all was essentially your inspirational drive to really help people and that's how you came up with you know this idea of really assisting people so thank you that's great the follow up question really becomes based on what you just said you changed right you transitioned from where you were to where you are today and that's never easy for a lot of people and it's always difficult i i personally have felt people find change to be very difficult in life and especially when it's shifting gears on your careers shifting gears on your jobs and in your case moving from being a sailor man or being a high pay high high paying um job or having high paying job to jump head on into your passion which was training and coaching and speaking and you did that you took that jump which many people are afraid to do and that's what i really call reinventing yourself and that's what really sure. called walking the talk because you did not say it, this can be done or you can do this you actually did it and you said that's how it's done leading from the front and i want to ask you more about that so when you did that transition when you really moved away from that point to the point where you are today how did you really what were the obstacles you faced did people call you crazy you know what really happened we would love to hear more on that yeah so so i, I think it's a fantastic question and it's going to give a lot of people a, some great insights from my experience of course uh um, yes people did call me crazy initially okay uh, they said you have such a fantastic career and i was growing 
uh, uh, Dr. Omar, I was really growing well because I captured and I understood a lot of things about the cruising industry. In fact, something was online that i came to know realize uh, came to know later that uh, they 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 could have they would have called me in, uh, to be a corporate employee in in santa clarita in us which was like a next jump for me right but again you know i didn't for me i didn't wanted to have this feeling of you know what i can do much more uh, i can do a lot in 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 life and I, again i realized you know like i, I was al- already 36 right and i realized that uh, you live you Obviously, you love live once. This is my philosophy, and you know you you need to have you need to you need to leave something behind. You need to have that legacy. You need to do much more. I didn't I didn't want it to be in in the realm of a job only. Now, when I started, yes, it wasn't easy. It was not easy because again, you you're leaving a high paying job. You have a family. Okay. Uh. Okay. And and I don't advise this to everyone as well. You know because it could be really hard. I don't want people to just jump in. There has to be some degree of planning. I I I I dived in head first, basically, and I got a little hurt as well. That's that's fine. I'm okay with that because, again, you know, I had good references in the past. You know, it's, it's what is the worst case scenario? I'll have food on the table. I'll have roof over my head, and I'm okay with that to move forward, right? Uh, but some people may not like the idea. I, I, this this is my idea, right? Uh, so you need to have a little bit of planning. Okay, what are you what are you doing? But it, I, I also want to warn people because sometimes people get stuck in this crazy eight of planning. It's like a vicious crazy eight, right? You keep going planning, 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 no execution. Don't do that. Execute, maybe at a smaller scale, right? So I went through uh, challenges like, you know what, obviously the, my, my, my revenue took a dip, what was coming in initially, because obviously I need to train myself. I'm, I'm learning a new skill. I'm learning a, a something, something new that I had never done before. Right. It it wasn't even that you know what I'm I'm branching out to something like a, I'm starting my own uh, travel agency or a, a, like a mini hotel which which connects with me in the same industry. Then still it's the same ground. It was completely new. So whatever it is, the point I'm making is without going too much into my detail. Whatever it is you a person wants to do, first I think it's a very important as a decision. You have to make a decision because that decision will help you to clear out everything else. Like you know, clear out all the clutter and you know what direction you are heading that's one second having a powerful reason my driving force has always been my family i'm, I'm i love my mm-hmm. family uh, you know and and the contribution the two aspects that i love about um, and i I'm, I'm i'm a little obsessed about these these two things right my family and and the work that i do so i said i this is this is what i want to do and uh, uh, the 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 second part is important is you have to be intentional like like now now let me tell you something about uh, what i'm trying to uh, tell you here right now Every one of us know where you are, right? You have, I think most of us, it's life, right? It's it's up and down always. It's not a straight line, right? You go through challenges, you go through issues uh, and you come out uh, with it. So every one of us has has some mechanism or some idea that something worked in that point in time, right? So you need to use the same mechanism. This is exactly what I did. So for example, uh, as I said in the past, we didn't had much. And I had to come out of those situations by uh, because life had cornered me and I had to push back. I had no other choice. Mm-hmm. Now, I used the same mechanism for myself this time intentionally. I created that environment, meaning I said, I'm not, as I said, I'm not advocating this to all of you guys, but I, this, is, this is what I did. Okay. I said, I'm not going to rely on the revenue that is coming in from a job. I'm going to come out of it that will put me back in the same spot like I was that life has cornered me and I need to generate revenue no matter what. If I have to work for 12 hours, 14 hours, I have no problem. I've done it in the past. I will, I will go back in the same mode and I'll do it, right? So I was intentional about these factors that had worked for me in the past by default. I did it intentionally this time saying, I'm going to create an environment. I'm going to rely on this work itself and I'm going to figure out I'm going to do it. May it take time, and like any business, anything that you start, it may take time. Now, for people out there, if you, if you really want to build something and you, you are transitioning from your job to a business, you have to do, keep doing something every single day to build that dream with a decision that I'm going to do it. You don't have to leave it like I did. Right? So these, this, this is my take on this. Um, having said that, 
you know, every time you do that, you're right about this, these kind of jumps not being not being easy for many. You took it and you really plunged head on and you learned a lot through that. Do you do you actually think that changes like these or really reinventing yourself or transitions like these become a point of a complete transformation for a person? Where, like you said, in a, when you started the talk, you said when you look back and look look at how the jo- how the dots got joined, uh, it's a different picture altogether. And so, when the person actually comes out of the transition and moves to the other side, when he actually starts looking back at the dots which have got joined, that's when the real fulfillment happens. And now, based on what he can actually achieve in the future as an outcome, in spite of what you just said that you won't recommend this for everybody, would you would you say that every person should really look for that kind of a change and not really get comfortable in where they are because comfort zone really doesn't really allow you to do anything more uh, worth striving for see look if it's my way i would i would say every one of us needs to live beyond their not not in their comfort zone because when when you when you start getting comfortable uh, you know stagnancy routine comes in and then it slows down i i i'm i'm not that guy i i, I really like momentum i really like uh, doing things i keep doing things and 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 inspiring or growing whatever it is right. now the reason why i say that i don't recommend this because people may not like the idea some people may like the idea you adopt whatever you want but I, i'm not mm-hmm. i'm not saying that i'm advising or advocating that you know leave your job leave everything and then you know go for your dream or go for your passion i'm not saying that as i said if you have a very powerful reason and you know if you, if you maybe maybe find a coach to, who can help you align these things because it's right. very important to understand there's, there's a great there's a great mechanism at play think about you, when you said you know people come from a certain background they you know like like humble background if they done well why is that because life has cornered them there is no other way to push back that's True. why they have done it right so this is one of the common theme that i found in in successful people as well you know they decided they said you know what it's not going to be like this so you have to you have to intentionally incorporate these things you know uh, you know by the grace of god all of all of the people listening out there maybe they they're doing well right they i mean if you if you're doing well what is the driving force you know what is that maybe not the money maybe something else maybe your mom or maybe you maybe you want to make life better for yourself for your friend for your family or like you know one of my colleague you know she has she had lost her son right and she, because she lost her son she completely changed her approach of life saying you know what because of my son because my son would have want this for me i'm going to be a superstar i'm going to be a hero mm-hmm. i'm going to go out and impact life she didn't sit there and say oh you know what i've so the point i'm making is find a mechanism that work for you find a coach get uh, get get someone who has done it or or get talk to someone who you who you really trust and 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 have rapport with and and find those things because i told i truly believe from the bottom of my heart and not just uh, again the the book is a philosophical thing that everyone has so much more that they can create for their life Absolutely. there's so much more that can be done right and it doesn't have to happen overnight as well it doesn't have to be by you know by by a great challenge or something like that you can be intentional and in, you can be you can be doing it systematically incrementally every single day with the intent with the clarity that you know what this is what i did today and this is the result that i that it produced and it's a success for me register that and then you'll realize that you know what within 10 days within 15 days you'll start seeing changes you'll start noticing elements right and uh, yeah and then one of the other aspects that really 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 impacted me my life is the environment i am the mm-hmm. biggest advocate of the environment and i would do anything uh, to find and create the right environment let let me give you an example of what i'm what i'm trying to say here first of all obviously if i if i want to be a, the highest paid comedian i want to f- I, i will find the highest paid comedian and the best of the best and i'm going to i'm going to be there in that environment i'm going to be uh, you know uh, i'm going to be completely consumed or absorbed in that environment that's how that's how i learn and that's how i think most of the human being learn there's something called i don't know if you, i think you should google this word it's called something called unconscious assimilation mm mm-hmm. the word is unconscious assimilation which means when you are in an environment knowingly or unknowingly you will absorb things from the environment from the True. people from the language from the mindset right and you will start getting better at those things 
which is the beauty of it right so like when when i am pursuing something i i, I become obsessed about those things meaning i i just go after it right the environment okay let me tell you something which i have never shared before there have there have been studies that i've i've heard that um, you know even while you are sleeping okay your mm-hmm. brain is very active very potent True. okay and there are a lot of people who have utilized this mechanism of feeding your mind even while you are sleeping mm. meaning um, uh, I, i've known people who would you know like like put something on like say for example you want to study I, i don't know how how much it has worked for them or how much it, it will work but i also started doing this and it, i think it has has an imp- had an impact uh you know you, you you switch on the audio or the book or the device whatever information you want to you want to uh, you want to learn or or imbibe or you, you want to listen you just put it on put it on a, on on a on a lower tone okay and put it beside your bed let it let it run while you're sleeping so i i i used to do that as well that 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 the power is to consume yeah interesting so right. i'm saying that i'm saying that you know that within this 12 4 16 hours whatever your waking time if you want the change to happen you have to be intentional you have to make a decision you have to go after it you have to doing it start doing it step by step build an environment create an environment uh and, and go for it fantastic um we have people who are enjoying your responses i don't see the name yeah. it comes as a facebook user uh who says yeah. if then if your intention is noble and you use a talent accordingly the world will make room for you very true very true absolutely absolutely uh there's also a question from the same user or a different one i guess uh who says aside from your desire to impact people what was your north star for you to identify the path you're walking now is for you okay that's 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 a fantastic question and by the way i i've i've been i've seen the northern lights as well that reminded you the north star quote reminded <laughs> you of the northern lights i mean i was in alaska so you know you that's, have. That's, that's, that's i great. i i still want to see it i have not been able to see it so far someday i i have been one of the privileged ones so thank god for that and, uh, yes you know i i i love traveling as well so anyways so the question is uh, what uh, what was the what was my north north star for me to identify this path now you see i think i think the decision that i made that day that i want to become a person of value and from that point onwards i started looking for opportunities possibilities that will lead me there and that mm-hmm. kind of became my path right uh, and i found the north star in 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 terms of you know a person who can help me do that is one of my mentor as well mr arfin khan i'm i'm uh, you know a lot of people know him and i'm sure you are aware of him as well yeah, absolutely so you know that ca- that 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 possibility happened that what i was looking for uh, you know because i see i i i really believe when you you have decided and you are looking for things things will appear to you they will stand out right. to you and that's mm-hmm. what stood out to me and you know going and connecting with him i didn't knew that i would be uh, doing this work but when i when i saw him i said you know what this is a great great role model for me for where i'm heading and i want to learn from this man and that kind of became a combination of me deciding and you know looking for opportunities and finding that gentleman to come in my life and 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 taking it from that that point onwards really really helped me to figure out this path and again you know uh, uh, what i've also realized initially i was also initially in this industry lost oh who who will know me how will this work what if this what if that like any any change or anything that you start you know i, I call it the, the, the like a form of resistance when you start something initially you will find resistance always right you, because because say for example you are uh, you know metaphorically i will just want to give you something visual uh, say for example you are you 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 are this you know like like an electrical appliance and you have lot of lot of wires like you know plugged in in different sockets that are fueling you right now meaning mm-hmm. your environment your job your your possibility right uh but again you know you what you're doing is you're removing some plugs and you're removing some plug your 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 energy is going low at 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 time because you you finding new sockets you need finding new new power points to to empower you to to guide you i i hope this is making sense i mean just i just made it up in my it mind absolutely, right? i'm actually imagining <laughs> it i can add it <laughs> yeah. in my mind <laughs> exactly so you know you you have you have to be you have to be aware of these things because you know you're you're unplugging those things so you will go up and down you'll go low in energy you say oh you know it's not working will it work how will it work 
but you'll have to start plugging in those things back again and 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 you know recharge yourself saying you know what okay if i if it's not working maybe i can talk to this guy maybe maybe i can talk to dr umar because you know he's he is doing this or he's doing that or maybe i can talk to irfan or maybe i can talk to a coach or maybe i can talk to a friend maybe i can talk to a relative who has done it you know who has traveled the world who has been this country i'm going to this country so whatever it is you have to find those plugs and start replugging back in the new new uh, for the new journey for the new environment right, right. and that's how you start you know building up your energy building up your identity because i think it's very important to keep the identity in mind of what you are building because sure. this is also one of the other thing that i did dr omar is i said here i am i i am an ex uh, sailor okay i need to disconnect from that identity and i'm i'm connected to a new version of myself and i'm creating a new identity but i can't simply think from the space where i am i have to think right. from the space of the identity that i'm creating as if i've already created that right and that's what actually pulled me towards the work and and the identity that i've created in 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 this this point impressive very very impressive i like the fact i like the i like the way you connected with uh you actually created the image in my mind it'll stick with me now about the plugs <laughs> coming into the body and charging you and feeling you up i think that makes so much of sense absolute sense uh, we have a comment here from conan who says very profound take away from me never regret race today life is in you today execute and you make it tomorrow thanks coach arfan there we go thank you so much uh, conan thank you thank you brother conan also has a question he says what do you suggest to not get intimidated by fears and i'm assuming he's referring to fears of change and fears of reinvention right. and what do you suggest to right. take fears head on right so you know l- l- let me give you a quick analogy right uh, fear obviously we all know it i'm sure we all of us study it it's always been part of our life it always will be part of our life so one of the things that again i'll i'll i'll, I'll i am a huge advocate of reason right because it has really profoundly changed my life having that sure. vision of my mom having a better life and that has driven me and uh, i will go through the wall for that i, I, I like fear will will disappear so that is one thing that you can do you need, as i said having a powerful reason but again easier said than done i know every single day you know we have this thought you know what is this what is that you have to you have to find a way to tone down those voices in your head which are yeah. fear based which are doubt based which are uncertainty based right and you can do that first of all to have having a profound language in your mind that you know what maybe like like one of my mentors code and one of my code is like my vision is bigger than the moment meaning mm-hmm. whatever i'm doing now it it may be tough it may be difficult and I, it means it's putting me on the spot if people are watching me what if this what if that what if they judge but when i think of that language in my mind that my vision is bigger than the moment it reminds me that you know what what the hell irfan what are you doing you have to impact 3 million <laughs> lives by 20th april 2023 when are you going to go online what is how are you going to do it so that sets the tone right right Agreed. i i i'm i am still not an i, I don't consider myself as a high expert right i consider as a human being on a mission wanting to help wanting to guide make lives better including my family my my, my mom my, my my kids and life of other that's that's all i know for that to happen i need to be seen so i if i if so, so i hope i answered conan's question so you have to have a language that allows you to progress beyond those fears in your mind and you need to implant that consciously intentionally you have to be intentional about it absolutely true and apparently it's not just me who liked your socket analogy fazila is from south africa and she is listening Hi, to you she is a very active person on excel rules as well she says i like your wiring in socket analogy i i love that too yeah. let me let me let me elaborate a little bit as well uh, over here uh, with the socket analogy because i think people have uh, liked it also remember while while i while i was doing the transition as well you may find some sockets that may suck energy out of you as well mm-hmm. not just give you energy right? right because you need to be watchful of those sockets as well you can't plug into those sockets because if you plug into those sockets maybe friend maybe a family maybe a relative they will say you know what what the hell are you doing i <laughs> unplugged from those sockets when i was doing the transition because i was earning in lakhs in indian rupees right uh, if, if, if you know uh, shipping industry and they said what the hell you are like giving away this this job and you're not doing it you've never done it 
you will not be able to do it you are just a graduate you are just this you are just that and i said i'm not i'm not i'm not plugging my socket with you in your this thing right so you you need to remember that it's like the energy will come to you energy can go away from you as well so you have to avoid those sockets as well absolutely very well said um shifting gears irfan you know one of your, one of your books and i have not read it i confess but i've heard yeah. about it a lot and one of your books has this chapter in it called get back on your horse yeah right and when yeah. i heard about that chapter when i heard about the topic of the chapter it was very intriguing for me i was like this is interesting right what is irfan really saying about it and i wish one day i'll get my hands on that book i'll read it but i said i'm going to talk to irfan anyways right today so let me talk to him let me hear it from the horse's mouth itself no pun intended there <laughs> sure, 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 sure. what's what's really what's the what's what goes behind the topic of the chapter get back on your horse yeah so i'll i'll tell you what it is it's it's, it's a great analogy and it comes comes from a story uh that i experienced and witnessed uh, while i was traveling as i mentioned and by the way I, you know, i'll give you my book as a gift i'm going to send it to you and can you send you the link so you can have it as well so you know in that uh, while i was traveling i was I, i remember it was i think it was in uh, the in mexico uh, uh, mm-hmm. the mayan ru- ruins the in mm-hmm. mexico there is you know the, the mayan mayan culture is a very traditional culture and uh, i was on a tour on that on that mayan ruins uh, cultural tour right so i was with with some passengers of, of of the ship and i was there as well along with them. and it was a horseback riding tour right so you're going there and you you know just the the tour guide was explaining everything and uh, and usually uh, we used to have like uh, cruise ship passengers anywhere in the age of 50 to 70 right so this i think 6 60 50 60 year old lady i i mentioned the the age in the book but anyways don't not going into detail she she was on the horseback and she fell down right and everyone was worried we all came out of of their horses and you know we the, the, the tour guide was also attending her and said Okay, so you know, I think you should not take this tour because uh, uh, because you know, I I don't I don't think you should. I mean, you may be hurt or whatever. And her husband as well is, is insisting, like, no, 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 you know, don't get back on the horse, and you know, we are not doing this tour. And uh, this lady, obviously with her age, she said, you know, time has gone by. It's I'm I'm sixty sixty five. I'm I may not never may never be able to come back again here. It's time now. I want to get back on the horse, and I want to do this. and that's the metaphor that i used in my book saying you know what <laughs> time keeps going by right i mean you know you're not going never going to be in control of time you have to get back on the horse and do what you must for your future for your growth and that's where the, the story comes in the get back on the horse fantastic i love it and 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 i think it also brings out a very good point which you mentioned earlier as well about taking action now being in the moment yeah. you know it doesn't matter obstacles will always come to you challenges will always be there life is full of ups and downs otherwise if life had to be a straight line there would be no fun at all in it right and so every single day every single moment every single situation you'd always have challenges and obstacles and i think the message from that chapter from your from your, at least from the chapter from the book from the book is to ensure that you live the moment get back on the horse and ensure you take action so that's profound thank you once again most welcome most welcome fantastic i have also heard you in the past uh, where you talked about i think it was one of your videos i have heard you talk about improving your social currency right and uh, you mentioned something about uh, gauging yourself or rating yourself and talk to people and understand what a social currency is i wanted to d- dive a little deeper into that and talk to you on that what exactly you meant by that and uh, how do you really gauge your social currency and why so you see again it it uh, this idea it's a great question you know and that great research that you know, it's been a while that i put I put that video out um you see that the social currency part also connects with the the decision that i'd made about my identity mm-hmm. right social currency meaning how how valuable i am to the people that i connect right and that's what i meant in short to have your social currency checked meaning how valuable i am what what do you think i add to your life how do you think i add to your life if you have to rate me on a scale of 1 to 10 what would you rate me just to get a perspective about you know with with the with the people that i know the surrounding that i have the people that i have in my life what do they how do they how do they look at me how much do they value me just to get an understanding and introspection about my own self and what can i do more because you see one of my 
uh, you know, core values is giving. And that's, that's where this thought was inspired as well, that I need to know, am I doing enough for, for the people that I already know? Or, or I'm just saying, you know, I want to impact the world, but I'm not in, doing enough for, for the people around me or, or just to get a perspective about it. So that's, that's where the, the idea came in. And, and you know, it re- can really impact, uh, you know, because I, I really believe in this. So uh, it can really impact on your corporate connections, your, your people that you're working with, the people that you daily connect with, your business partners, your customers, your, like, you know, if you talk about customer relation, if you're heading a business, and it can really, really impact and, 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 and give you some direction about what needs to improve for you to be a better, a better have, have a better social currency value. Very interesting. I like the concept. Um, I had never heard of social currency before I actually heard, heard it from you. And I, I, I think it's a very valuable tool, not just for measuring your worth, but also for understanding how much are you really contributing. Like you said, giving becomes the number one core factor which really decides how much is a life worth living. You know, what is the fulfillment level you're actually getting? And I think one of the best ways to really feel fulfilled is to ensure you keep giving of whatever resources you have. Could be your time, could be your money, could be your abilities, could be whatever you have in terms of helping people and assisting people. And uh, happy to hear that once again from you in detail. Great. Irfan, um, in the past, and I have given a few talks on this, but I wanted to hear your perspective also. 2020 has been a year of disruption, has been a year of change, has been a year of people trying to acclimatize themselves to the new way of working, uh, new technology, and being a little unsocial, social distancing, and what have you today. Keeping that in mind, a lot of people have suffered, of course. You know, livelihoods have been lost, lives have been lost, near and near and dear ones have been lost. At the same time, when you look at the brighter side of it, There have been people who have made a lot of money. There have been people who have moved up the ladder in terms of learning new stuff, right? In developing new habits, in in trying to, uh, in spending more time with the family. I can vouch for it. I'm a person just like you who travels a lot. Um, I've I've traveled to more than 30 countries myself. But for the past one whole year, I have been grounded. And happily so. <laughs> since, March, since, since March 2020 to March 2021, it, until now, I've not set my foot on a plane. People used to joke about me. They used to say, I actually spend more time on an aeroplane than in my car, which was true, frankly. <laughs> okay. Better, and so better, better, better. 2020 changed that. I got to spend more time with the family. My three kids got more time of me. I was doing their homework, doing the online schooling with them. And, you know, awesome. I loved every bit of it. Obviously, not everybody was in the same boat, right? Uh, mm-hmm. People faced challenges. People had people had trouble getting over 2020. What would your advice be, or what would your suggestion be, rather, to people who have faced that challenge? They're still reeling in the fact that 2020 was a horrible black spot in their lives, and how do I really come out of it? So, what would you suggest? You know, being a being a clarity coach, being a person of change, uh, how would you suggest people come out of that? Uh, period of doom and gloom. Okay, so uh, the great question. Uh, again, I'm I'm no expert. Uh, disclaimer, uh, but I have I've gone through my own journey. So I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you what I feel right now is going on and how a person should focus on the future in a way that they can create they can create possibilities for themselves. That's 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 one of the aspects. Now the current challenge again it's. It can be different things, right? It could be money, it could be uh, loss of job, it could be so many different things. So uh, uh, obviously that has to be figured out with the best possible case, uh, you know, for them going forward. Meaning having, see, I, I truly believe everything, everything comes from a certain mindset. Right. People having, you know, a lot of money, losing a couple of hundred thousand can be a big thing for them because of the mindset or people not having anything. And losing, losing like maybe house or, or going through extreme, but still figuring out things. So it's all about the mindset. So, you know, first, of, uh, the first and foremost thing that has to be done for every human being on planet Earth is to get their mindset aligned and know mm-hmm. that there is so much more possible than what they are currently into it. If they just, if, if we just think from that perspective, I know it is hard. Easier said, me saying than, than done. And I, and I totally respect that. But it is important to have a vision-focused mindset, right? True. Not a goal-focused mindset. And that I think there is a video on on the, on my YouTube channel on that as well. Uh, if I I don't know if I've put it in, but I've created one. 
vision focused or a goal focused mindset goal focused is like you know that the 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 current thing that is going on which is like a smaller version of the vision uh, but we have if you have vision focused you will deal with the challenges with with a different attitude right so you you need to have that check that you know am, am i focused on just because of the challenge i'm i'm just scrambling around and running around and figuring out things or i'm focused on a on a greater vision now having said that let me give you another aspects of how to start implementing a vision focused mindset meaning uh more than ever before in today's scenario i feel individually all human beings uh, have to start figuring out how can i stand out how can i be a linchpin if you know mm-hmm. what i mean how can i be mm-hmm. how can i be a person of value like like i evolved my identity as a person of value now opportunities come to me people come to me uh, and say hey listen can you do this for me can you be part uh, 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 like a like a like a sleeping part in my company as a consultant which i've got the opportunity so all these things will start happening because you see you have to every one of us has something or the other which is really good for the world or or or, or is an important aspect that you can give out to the world sure. now how how can you do that you can you can do that by putting value in the, in the very in a very easiest form right mm-hmm. if, if you are literate if you can write write a book write a book about something that is unique from your perspective and and from your maybe your experience you know some of some you know you have really unique experience and that could be valuable to the world so start building that identity or start building that um future vision that you know what i will i will be I'll, i could branch out into this or i could uh, like the transition part that we are discussing right so start creating something which is unique to you right it uh, and it can't be disconnected from you and people would pay you for in the long term or people would say you know what ah okay that guy like you you know clarity coach or a coach or whatever it is right so it's very important to have the future vision in mind no matter what fitly is going on and figure out how can you have the right attitude and mindset even in 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 a tough situation seek help seek help i mean it you know when you are when i am in the well i may not see beyond the well right so i need to find out someone who's standing on on top and say hey listen you know what do you see what do you see better things you can you you know guide me or something like that and uh, and 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 reach out that's that's the best thing and and, and you know people like you and me and, and many more coaches and speakers and you know guides and people and and much more beyond speaking and coaching there are a lot of people who are standing up to help and support as well right Absolutely. it's a matter of the direction and it's a matter of guidance very well said and i think one of the i think that was uh, the driving factor for us as well to really go ahead and form next adoz in the fag part fag end of last year and which really has you know to to your point to prove your point that has really really allowed us and that allowed others really to come out of the darkness they were experiencing so absolutely great points there uh, we have a comment who says uh, an audience member i don't have the name who says you really make sense to me irfan seems like you are putting into words my own journey wow that's beautiful wow that's awesome thank you so much i i'm glad uh, it helped and then you have fazila again who says motivation is like a boss you need it every day keep the momentum <laughs> <laughs> right and we have conan who says when you live your life in alignment with a purpose that is centered or centered on selflessly adding value for others opportunities become abundant and your life becomes fulfilled great discussion absolutely conan absolutely thank you so much absolutely uh the comments keep flowing and i i'm not able to highlight all of them but i was able sure. to see whatever i could and have done that um you know understanding that we are we closing in on our 60 minutes of time we had the one last question i have for you irfan is you you also a clarity coach and you provide clarity i've seen some feedbacks of your mentees and coaches come back and say i really got a lot of clarity when i spoke to irfan and i i that's 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 so nice uh, such lovely messages to have really now a lot of people around me i see whether it is relationship whether it is career whether it is their personal lives people generally lack clarity right they're confused what step to take which direction to go in and because of that confusion they are they actually are not able to take any action in either direction so the confusion leads to inaction inaction leads to frustration and then you come back to this you come back to square one and you really don't move your move an inch at all yeah if there was if there was and in your opinion based on expertise if there was a one size fits all solution uh, 
for career, relationships, profession, and personal life, and what have you, what would that be? Or what would the framework look like if anybody wanted to achieve clarity in their lives? Right. So you see, first of all, uh, what do you want? That's a very basic and a very powerful question. What do I want? Right. And if you def- if you are able to define that, what do I want? What my future looks like? You know, maybe do some writing activity, like you know, just pour your heart out. Whatever it is that you want, like what do you want your life to look like in the area of relation, in the area of health, or whatever you're focusing on, just just pour your heart out. That will give you enough for you to know what is the direction that you can take. Right? It may mm-hmm. it, it, it may not give you a specific exact dot to the cent uh, clarity, but it will give you enough for you to know where you are heading. Right? That's one. Now. Second thing, uh, uh, I want to emphasize the meaning of clarity, the way I look at it. The meaning of clarity is not about me knowing everything about my journey in, 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 in like step by step and in detail. The meaning of clarity also means, right? Having a vision is brilliant. You should have something work, working towards something that should be there, I think. But say, for example, I don't know what I'm going to do today. Uh, from today to the next one week because I don't know where I'm, I don't clearly know where I'm heading. I know this is what I want to achieve or this is the picture that I'm trying to create. So say, for example, let me give you an analogy here again, uh, Omar. So say, for example, you're you're driving in the middle of the night, okay, mm-hmm. and you are driving somewhere in India, like maybe a small village. They don't have lamppost, the, the light on the road, right? They don't have it. And you have your 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 headlights of your car which goes to a certain meter, certain number of meters, and you see that until that point, and beyond that is darkness. You can still drive forward, right? Yeah. That's the point. People all people get stuck saying, oh, I don't know where I'm going, and I don't know what I'm after. But I, you still know from today to next five days, what can you do? You do those right. things, and then at that point, you will, you will have enough again for the next five days. You'll have enough again for the next five days, right? So there is no reason why why we, we should get stuck, right? It's it's just our own own mechanism or, or the way we are looking at. Like you know, again, we, a lot of people are different, right? We all have different, like you know, the traditional personality types and the way we look at the world, the way we relate. And again, you know, uh, having a coach or a guide really helps because pe- those coaches, like you know, you and me, we can we can understand a lot of these things because we have studied these things. So we can guide. So clarity may not come overnight as well. Clarity also may come walking those five meters or walking those five five steps or five days, and it'll allow. Let's allow that to happen as well. Don't resist, because uh, again, you know, we we we. I I believe this is my view of of you know reading and understanding the human beings and life and 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 how we evolve human beings uh, over a period of time. We have we a collection of ideas, right? We have our own idea. We have ideas. We have stories. We we live in past with the stories. We we go with ideas that we know of, or we have conditioned ourselves, or we have gathered. Like say, for example, when you we were living in um, you know way back when we were living in jungle, right? No one told us that you're go- you're supposed to eat four times a day or three times a day, right? We w- w- someone decided one day, oh, you know what? We have now started going growing fruits. Uh, we have now started growing uh, all these food grains. And we have enough to eat for three days, uh, so for for three times a day. And we started having three meals a day, right? So don't get stuck with what you know, right? Find out what what you don't know as well, and fi- introspect a little bit what 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 can be, and find mm-hmm. someone to to have like a resonating board. It's very important, right? Because this has really impacted me. Having me having a mentor, me having a group of buddy of coaches who I can you know bounce back ideas like a mastermind. I said you know hey Omar you know what. Uh, how can we do this? Like you're picking my brain, I could pick your brain, I could pick Conan's brain, and so many more, right? So that also helps. So you're not alone. Don't get have this feeling. Talk to someone who who you who, who you can rely on. Very true. Very true. I I can totally relate with that. Having a sounding board, having people whom we can bounce of ideas on. Uh, you people who are like-minded, of course. The last thing you want to do is go to people who are going to suck away your energy, right? Yeah, you will have. I was about to mention that. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, you you made a very good point about having the right company. You mentioned mastermind as well, and that I think makes a big difference in everything you want to do. 
because yeah. eventually in school we used to hear this saying a man is known by the company he keeps and now you realize the importance of that today in various forms yeah you know yes yeah, true true true, true so true. Fantastic, share, fantastic. I, I know why I had said that that would be my last question, but I was wrong. I have one more with me. <laughs> and it's, <laughs> okay. more of, it's, it's more of it's more of based on what you had said in the past. And it, it also kind of stuck with me. I have been to Israel as well, like you have been Jordan and Israel. And I have been to some yeah. really, really those places, Jordan, Israel, Lebanon are so historic, Egypt, including are so historic. And you really look at the pyramids. You look at the Dead Sea, you look at, uh, you know, um, all the historic places, in Jerusalem, for example, and you wonder, 5,000 years ago, <laughs> someone yeah. had made those pyramids, and today yeah. they still stand as a leave behind of whoever made it, right? Without going into controversies or whether you're for it or against it, I think that's a great way of, of, of really asking yourself, what are you leaving behind, right? What's your yeah. legacy, and what have you done for the world as such? Based yeah. on that, you know, as that as a foundation, I remember you mentioning once that you had been to the Dead Sea as well. And you said, good friends are like the Dead Sea. Right. Yeah. And and you went yeah. on to explain the analogy, how exactly that is. And, you know, if you could just share that yeah. with the viewers, that would be great. Yeah. I love the analogy, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, uh, you, I, I, let, let me give context to people who don't know the, the, the properties of the Dead Sea. Like, I think I think the magnesium content is so high that it will you will not sink in into it like you know i i, I know uh, we used to have tours on on ships people used to go and experience this dead sea mud and you know the, because it's very good for your skin and everything so people used to go there and on on on, on the beach side and they used to go a little bit inwards as well but it it, it has a li like a buoyancy like it'll it'll, mm -hmm. it'll throw you back it will not let you sink in so that's what i used as an analogy for of great friends because they, they'll not let you that they'll, let, they'll not let you go down They'll bounce you back up. They'll they'll throw you back out, right? Uh, and that's 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 what the analogy was. You have done some good research, man. I like it. <laughs> I told you I follow you, and yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I think you made some really really good points in all those videos. Uh, great great catching up with you, Irfan. Uh, Fazila is also very thankful, and she uh, she thanks you for Thank you, the Fazila. great insights shared. And everybody uh, totally enjoyed the uh, enjoyed the session. Thank you very much, Irfan. I enjoyed this a lot. I learned a lot as well. Me you too. are very, very insightful. I think all the experience you've accumulated traveling over these years and meeting different people and cultures, I think all that has a lot to say. And I am not so sure one hour with you is enough. I think it has to be a <laughs> three or four hour session. <laughs> Maybe in the future. Yeah. I would love to have you back again on next sure either on a panel discussion or an interview session like this or a live session, whatever suits you. But we definitely want to have you back. Thank you so much for, for, for your kind and great words. And, and, and thanks for the honor. And thank you so much, everyone who is listening out there for being patient and sticking with us for so long. And I, I love my work. Anything, you know, I, I don't know if you want to give a link or something. And anyways, I, I'm here to help, basically. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank and the next time, if you are, if you do happen to visit Dubai, do let us know. Give us a buzz. We would love to interact with you. We would love sure. to meet you sure. and, and talk to For you sure. as well. For sure, brother. Inshallah. You take okay. care. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, to the so audience, much. this live will not get ended. This is available on Facebook page and the group as well for anyone to watch the replay. And you're willing to ask questions and comments. And if Irfan can, he might respond back to you. Anyways, I'll be leaving Irfan's contacts on the comment section. If anyone wants to get in touch with Irfan, he's a clarity man. And that's how he's known as. He's known for the clarity he gives you. And so if anyone wants to get in touch with him, please do so. He has He's the author of five books, coming up with the sixth one. And anyone who wants to get hands on his books, please again do reach out to him. I'm sure every single one of them is worth reading. Thank you, everybody. Fantastic session. Good participation. Keep well. Have a great day. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you.